everybody today we're trying to find the last digit of a, a huge exponential term uh, it's a two-digit number raised to a, a three-digit number now what we're going to do uh, for this particular problem is we're going to consider what this would be congruent to I call it R because congruence and remainders are, are very synonymous things uh, mod 10 Okay, and that's just the obvious truth that if you divide a number by 10, um, the remainder will be the last digit. Okay, and I say obvious, let's look at a concrete example. What if you had uh, 352? Okay, well, 2 is manifestly the last digit, right? But it's also true that 352 is congruent to 2 modulo 10. Now, um, and that's that's very simple to see. Another way of thinking of this is that 10 divides the difference 352 minus 2. Okay? So anyway, that's going to motivate um, this idea that we're going to be using. Now, this famous result here, the Euler fee result, is not applicable because notice right here that we would have, uh, we would have, let's see here, what is it, 48? 48 and 10 are not relatively prime. 48 comma 10 share a common factor of 2. And so the GCD of 48 and 10 is 2. And for this result called the totient function result, to hold the the base and the modulus have to be relatively prime. Some people call that co-prime. All right, so let's keep going. Now, uh, 48 has a prime uh, decomposition of 2 to the 4th times 3. This is the same thing as 16 times 3. Okay, and again, that just motivates everything we're doing basically that the prime factorization is that's why they call it the fundamental theorem of arithmetic now we're, i'm going to state this as a fact but it follows real quickly from something that may be even more obvious six raised to the n is always going to be congruent to six okay mod 10. Now, you can prove that with by induction pretty easily, very easily. It follows almost immediately from induction, and you can just think about it, you know. Uh, 6 squared is 36, 6 cubed is 216, 6 to the 4th is 1296. And so 6 always lasts, you know, when you're exponentiating, the 6 always lasts, all right? And, uh, and also any other number that would be congruent to 6, which would be 16 in our case, okay? So, again, the, the proof of that isn't very difficult, and... Um, and also another thing that's super useful here is 3 to the 4th is congruent to 1 mod 10. Another way of saying that 3 to the 4th is 81, right? So uh, 10 definitely, whoops, uh, 10, uh, 10 definitely divides uh, 81 minus 1. Okay. All right, now again, the rest of this is fairly routine. <clears throat> Excuse me. So our original number is 48 to the 345th. And uh, this is all just very basic stuff right here. Laws of exponents. Okay. Now, the primary work we have to do right here is to uh, notice that 345, I'll just write it down here, 345, when you divide it by 4, which is important here, 4 is... The, the exponent that gives us a nice representation of 1 here. 345 is equal to 4 times 86 plus 1. That's easy to do in your head. 4 times 86 is 320 plus 324. That's 344. Then you add 1. Okay, so plus 1. Okay. And so you see, that's why you can put the superfluous, but we can put a 1 right there. Okay. But guess what? Uh, we just we know that 16 raised to any natural number is congruent to 6. So we can literally replace this big object, this uncalculable object, with just 6 in modular arithmetic. Okay? 
and also three to the fourth, and I did this for emphasis, three to the fourth is one modulo 10. So we have one to the 86th. And again, for emphasis, obviously one to the 86th is one, but I just want you to see. So now, so this is congruent to six times three, which is 18. But that is certainly, again, the one goes, you know, and then six times three is 18. And then uh, this would be congruent to eight, my 10. Okay, and we've seen that doing modulo 10 on a number is equivalent to finding its last digit. All right, so the answer to the problem is eight. Now, y'all, this was motivated a little bit by a problem. Um, see if I can find it here. This problem was presented at Quora, and they did it in a nice way, but it was kind of ad hoc, pattern-seeking, one-off sort of thing. It works. They got an answer of eight also. But again, it's it's yet it, a lot of good thinking went on there. But the modular arithmetic approach gets you past having to be too innovative or ingenious, right? You just take advantage of the powerful properties of modular arithmetic. And, um, and again, the only catch to this problem is we can't use this routine result. Uh, we could uh, we could have used it to actually find. Uh, that three to the fourth is 81 because phi of 10 happens to be four. Okay, and then it would result since three, it, this would work out since three and 10 are relatively prime. But it's real easy by inspection to note that 10 divides 81 minus 80, hence three to the fourth is congruent to one uh, mod 10. But in any event, uh, the last digit, the answer to the question is eight. Thanks for being.